So a couple of videos back, we've made a fake login that just issues tokens willy-nilly. In this video, we are going to make it more realistic so that user credentials are actually taken into account. To keep the video simple, however, we are not going to connect it to a database. However, we are going to do a service which is quite similar to how you would use a database, so it will be very easy to connect a database later. Now let's get back to the code and actually implement it. A really cool thing that you can do inside your controller is actually get the logged in user. The way that you do that is in your endpoint method, do an annotation of authentication principle, which comes from Spring Framework Security Core Annotation. And this is going to be your type of user principle. Just do the one that you made, call this principle. And let's, uh, let's expand this. Let's say, if you see this, then you're logged in as user. And then let's get their email from get email from the principal. And just for good measure, let's do user ID principal get, oops, get user ID. And let's make this pretty so it doesn't go over the margin here. Always make your code neat. Now let's try that. Let's get that token back in and boom. If you see this, then you're logged in as user test at test.com. And that comes from this token from JWT. And user ID also comes as a subject from the token. Let's get that postman out of here. As you're jumping for joy, I hope that you're not forgetting that the login that we've made is actually totally fake. If we open our auth controller, we can see that we have hard-coded the information that we issue this token for. So if so, so anybody can enter absolutely any data in the login and they can still log in. So let's fix that. And in order for us to fix it, we need some sort of a source where we get users from. So that is usually going to be your database. However, I don't want to make this more complicated than it needs to be. So I am going to make a fake user service, which is just going to serve users based on their email. Let's do that. Let's create a new package in our application package, and let's call this service. And you will most likely have something named user service. So let's mark this as a service so that it gets managed by Spring. And usually you would go in and do something like private final user repository, blah, 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 but we don't have that. So let's just make a public optional uh, method that returns a user entity. Oops, I don't have a user entity yet. So let me create that. Let's create a package called entity. And that's where you would place your database entities. Let's create a user entity. Let's get some getters and setters there. And you would do something like entity. Not doing that right now. Let's just uh, give it an ID. Let's give it an email. Let's give it, uh, oops, let's not make these final. Let's just uh, getter setters. They're, they're not final. Let's do a string password. And when you are doing something like password, always annotate it with chase and ignore just so you're not leaking any hashes. What else is missing? Uh, let's, let's add a single rule. And to make it simple, also, let's do this as a string. Let's call this role. And just to get my point across that user principle is not a user, let's add some extra info here. So this is not going to be representative of anything. It's, yeah, this is just to make user entity different from user principle so that you get that these are totally different concepts. All right, back into user service, we can now 
import our user entity and let's make this, let's call this method find by email. We're going to pass in an email, which we're looking for. And let's make a to do move this to a database so that we don't forget this. But uh, let's do it like let's do it like this. Let's say that private static final string existing email is going to be test at test.com. And then if existing email does not equal the email that was passed in, then we just return an empty optional. This means that the user was not found. That's a guard clause. Now, in any other case, let's just uh, create our fake entity. Let's, uh, let's call it var user new user entity. Let's give it an ID of one. Let's set email as existing email. User set password. Now this is quite important. Don't store plain text passwords even in example applications, because it's very simple to set it up properly with bcrypt. So let's do that. I want my user password to be test. So let me just open a browser and, and let's search for bcrypt online. Uh, the first result that's, that's going to come up is probably going to be bcrypt generator. So this works string of test encrypt, copy the hash, put it as your password, because this is what would be saved in the database. And let's just uh, write a comment test that this means test. And let's continue. Let's, uh, let's set a role for this user. So user set role, role admin, user set extra information. And let's call this my my nice admin. And let's return an optional of this user entity that we've just created. So with our user service done, let's move on to security and let's connect this to Spring Security. Inside the security package, let's create another class and let's call this one custom user detail service. Now, how's that different from our user service? Well, let's see. Let's create that and let this one implement user detail service. So that comes from Spring Security. So this is what Spring uses to load user specific data into the framework. So let's do that. Uh, let's implement the methods and it says load user by username. And in our case, a username is their email. And let's inject our user service into this one. So tag this as component to require our constructor and inject the user service. Now, this load user by username needs to return a type of user details. And if you've paid attention, you'd know that this user details is actually what is implemented in our user principle. So what we can do here is we can just return our user principle. And the reason why I've split user service from custom user service is that this one that we just made user service, this returns a user entity and not a user principle. So let's do some conversions inside of this method. First, uh, let's get the user. So user user service, find by email, we pass in a user name. And what if we don't find a user with that email? Let's do or else throw. So if it doesn't find a user, this will quit with an exception. And as a return, I'm going to build a user principle. And I'm going to need to pass in some, uh, some parameters like user ID user get ID. Let's map this one email 
you, uh, user get email, authorities, it's a list of new simple granted authority and user get role. Because remember, principal authorities is a list of authorities and what we've put in user is just a single role. You can expand this into a list of roles as a challenge. So there's that, but there's one more thing missing and that is the password. There's, there's no password in our user principal, so let's add that. Let's do a private final string password. Don't forget to JSON ignore just in case somebody prints this out into the wild. So make sure that we're not leaking any hashes. And here where it says get password, do a return password. And this is important because a spring under the hood uses user details, get password to actually compare it, compare the hashes and do all, all the login stuff. So, so this is important. Let's get back to custom user details service. And finally, let's pass in that password from user get password. And that's it. Now you need to connect this custom user details service to spring security. Let's do that open web security config and inside the config, you can just do a pri inject a private final custom user detail service. Let's call it exactly that. And now you need to define a couple of new beans. So just below, uh, just below your main application security config bean, uh, do another bean and define a password encoder and do a new bcrypt password encoder. So this will make sure that it's not plain text, but it's actually bcrypt. And another bean that you need to make uh, returns an authentication manager. And this is what's gonna do all the magic for your logins. Do authentication manager and pass in HTTP security as an argument. And now do a return HTTP, get shared object and inside that authentication manager builder, make sure it's a builder dot class. And now you can set user detail service, the one that you've injected into your security config. So custom user detail service, the one that we just made. And this one might throw an exception. So propagate that to your method. What else do we need? Uh, we need a password encoder and we can just do an and build. So now your spring security is wired to actually have login. Let's make the actual login. So go to your auth controller and really quickly inside of this controller temporarily, we're going to try and pass the credentials that user has put in the request. We're going to pass that through spring security. So do a private final authentication manager, inject that authentication manager. And let's, uh, let's try to authenticate it. Uh, do a var authentication equals authentication manager dot authenticate. Inside it, we're gonna pass what comes from spring is a username password authentication token. And that takes the arguments of principal and credentials, which uh, in this case basically means that it's a request get email and request get password. If user has entered invalid credentials, it will fail here. If credentials are valid, a new authentication will be created with our user principal. So just in case somebody is gonna call some extra services in the future here, we can just uh, do a security context holder, get context, set authentication. We can set it to this authentication. Now let's extract the principle from that uh, principle 
authentication get principal, and that is an object, but we know that it's our user principal. So let's cast that to user principal that we just made. And let's issue a token, not for these hard coded values, but for something that comes from our principal. So principal, user ID, email, principal, and get authorities, there we go. So that is complaining because as you can see, our JOT issuer needs a list of string roles and these are authorities. What we can do is we can, uh, we can convert that. Let's do principal get authorities stream map uh, granted authority, granted authority, get authority. And this can be optimized back to this. Let's do a to list. And now here we can pass in roles. So now if I've done everything correctly and I run my application, a user should be able to log in with correct credentials. So let's try that. Let's go to Postman and let's try to log in with uh, something fake. And ooh, it gives a 403 forbidden. But let's try and do a user that actually exists, test at test.com. And that's still forbidden because we haven't provided a password. Let's do a password. Let's do anything, still nothing. And the correct password was test. Let's run it. And there you have it. There is our access token issued by our backend that is valid. And that can now be used as a token to reach some secured endpoints. And this is how you make a login with Spring Security. Hopefully it should be pretty easy for you to connect a database later. You've also learned how to inject a currently connected user principal into the controller. In the next video, I am going to show you how to add some more roles to your system so that not only you can have simple users, but you can also have admins. As always, before you click off, please leave a like on this video so you can find it later, share it with your colleagues if they will find it useful, and subscribe if you want some more content like this. Now, let's go to the next video.